Well, welcome to Unite Now. Uh, we have conversations at the intersection of leadership and flourishing. This is a little different because I'm at in the host chair um, and Ruth is in the interview chair. And so we're excited. Um, this is a very special conversation um, that we're going to have with Ruth. And I'm excited. I'm excited, Ruth. Um, as many of you have probably already read with our emails, we are excited um, about the transition that Ruth will be making. And we wanted to take some time, Ruth, to sit with you and to journey and, and chronicle your story with Unite and to really just paint a picture of, of what our work together looks like. Um, you've done so much and been with Unite for, for some time and wanted to take that time to do that. So welcome, Ruth to unite now right? it's great to be here right <laughs> <laughs> well i mean i think for many people this is shocking news but it is um uh news that we're also excited about because we get to continue the conversation about flourishing right and about our communities and that goes nowhere with your transition so i just wanted to start by really asking you um what what brought you to this work of flourishing, um, what informed that for you in your life? That's a great question. I think, um, you know, interestingly, I had been in church my whole life and I had gone to Bible school and, um, and then I moved into this community and the community was a lower income community. And I was experiencing life that I had just sort of been isolated from before. And it was almost like in my the country I was living in, where it felt like everyone's existence was the same, I realized, oh, some people's life and story is vastly different than mine. Their experience is vastly different. And as, as I was there, people were talking about, like I could see that there was so much that wasn't the way that it was supposed to be. And, and, and it was sort of like, okay, but what do we do with this? And what is my role as a Christian in this? And I think that those questions started to maybe just cause me to be curious and, and caused me to be like, okay, Lord, what is your plan in all of this? And I think that actually led me to start to engage in God's word and to ask questions of God's word that I hadn't asked before. And as I was asking those questions, I started to just see this like more whole story, which, you know, some people, you know, we, it's kind of common, this idea of like, hey, we were created and then there was a fall and then there's redemption and restoration, but just starting to see like the fall when like, it affected everything in our lives and our relationships, our relationships with God, mm. our relationships with each other, our relationships with ourselves, our relationships with our vocation, our relationship between groups and even with systems. Like all of a sudden, everything that was meant to be harmonious and healthy and thriving like that was all vandalized and none of it was the way that it was supposed to be anymore. And all of a sudden it's uh, like, I'm in this community where I'm recognizing things weren't the way they were supposed to be. But I, but it also sort of made this more robust picture of my whole life. Like where I came from, what there were things that weren't the way that they were supposed to be to things that went beyond just knowing my relationship with God. Right. I knew like, Oh, people don't know Jesus. We need to, help reconcile that relationship and yes that's still true but but like recognizing there was so there was like far more about my world that wasn't the way that it was supposed to be and so then that started to be like okay well what do we do with this yeah. like when I look yeah. around and I see the pain and I see the brokenness of relationships and I see people who are experiencing education that doesn't prepare them well for the world or living in housing that where there are are so many things that are unsafe and unhealthy for them or when i am experiencing this sort of even just different um like experience with maybe my local law enforcement that was so different from the way that i grew up it started to just sort of be like well well what is my call as a christian mm -hmm. in this like 
as a disciple of Jesus. And I think the thing that I started to see from God's word is that his heart is for reconciliation and justice. His heart is for me as his child to live a life of healthy and right and joyful and equitable relationships and then to be a part of restoring those relationships where they've been broken and where they're not thriving and um that was a long answer but basically what i'm saying is is like all of that was so foundational to say okay and so you asked initially like bringing me to the work of flourishing well the idea is like the repairing and restoring relationships back to the way they were supposed to be relationships mm -hmm. where where everybody and every relationship thrives is healthy and equitable i was starting to see like this is what this is what god's plan is this is what jesus was even helping to empower and accomplish by his death on the cross and so that's what brought me to the work of flourishing and um it it seems like there's there's is this universal calling to flourishing that we we all have if we right. identified or uh, look at the story the narrative of mm -hmm. god and the work through christ that you're saying that that brought you to it understanding reclaiming rediscovering the call from god yeah well you know there's like passages <clears throat> where god says like this person was righteous and just and then mm -hmm. god says is that not what it means to know me that they mm -hmm. live this life of mm -hmm. righteousness and justice in all of their relationships and so to me, it started to almost reframe it, like, hey, I know and I love Jesus. And as I get to know him and I want to follow him as a disciple, then mm -hmm. then yes. So it, I do feel like it is a very universal thing, right? Like it is, it, is, it is God's heart for repairing and restoring relationships back to the way they were meant to be when he first created us. And as his like ambassadors, as, as part of his family, we get to be a part of that work. Yeah, the the co-laboring mm -hmm. and, and partnering with God to do that. And I'll say you've done that well, exceptionally well with Unite. Um, for the last six years, mm -hmm. six years you have been with Unite and much of that, 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 that drive, that zeal, that, that reclaiming of our universal call to flourishing, you've introduced to unite in a very um timely way and so what was that process what was unite you mm -hmm. know when you came mm -hmm. and what has it transformed into being as as you've walked with unite the last six years yeah that's a great question you know in some ways i think when i um, met unite they they were all about flourishing they were all about relationships they were all about collaborating with others and, and uh, locking arms. They were all about seeing sort of this, like the image of God in others and, and that image shines. So they, mm -hmm. The values and the DNA, and, and for those who had been a part of the work long before I was, like that, that like heart and the values were already there. I think the the really fun part of it was that i had been living um but prior to coming to unite for over a decade i had been living out best practices i had been learning and and getting to implement some of what have kind of developed as the best practices of mm -hmm. of like actually how do you do this in a community right like you can talk about this grand vision and the um philosophy but like then what does that look like on the ground because i think unite has always wanted to live that and they've been doing that in some really beautiful and powerful ways and had been before i came but you know over time as people do work they start to see like oh this is this is like getting us to where we wanted to go this is actually accomplishing it yay right and so mm -hmm. i had prior to unite i had been able to be living some of those practices and philosophies out in the ministry context i had been in and so what the cool intersection was is like, hey, Unite is all about this. I'm about it too. And I've gotten to like practice this. And so then like, so how do we then like work together to sort of reimagine the model, the practical, like how we live this out 
um, in the world. And I've just gotten to be a part of helping Unite to do that based on some of the cool experience that I got to have just come before coming to Unite. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there has been some more, I say, concrete things that we've seen with Unite over the last few years and it's kind of its evolution from, you know, hey, how do we engage churches and connect with pastors to more of this blueprint of how do we see communities flourish and how do we become more localized in doing that work and how do we discover the beauty within communities? And so what has that blossomed into? We, we call it the Unite Flourishing Model, but what was that process mm -hmm. to even discovering this flourishing model for mm -hmm. Unite? Mm -hmm. So as Christians and as people in general have been doing this work of flourishing over the last probably four or five decades, mm -hmm. there have been many different best practices that have emerged to say, hey, when people do this, it leads to some really powerful results, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and I would say over the last four decades, there are like three different kind of distinct models that are somewhat, they have some overlap and then some differentiation. Um, one is the city gospel movements. And the city gospel movement, sort of the core of that model or that idea is that churches, when churches across a city link arms with each other for the good of the city, they can accomplish far more um, than they ever could have by themselves. And they also, there's something unique about that partnering across a city that, that brings this like beautiful aroma for the gospel and for how people are experiencing the church. Um, mm -hmm. And so city gospel movements basically says, hey, churches link up do something together for your city. And that can take a lot of different shapes, right? So um, so that's one of them. Then another model is, it's sort of like a combination of asset-based community development and Christian community development, if people are familiar with CCDA or ABCD. But but I would say that in some ways is the, the substance of where a lot of the best practices come from because those models say, hey, when you're doing work in a community, well, there's a lot to it, right? But but it kind of comes down to like, you have to know and see how God is already working there. You have to see the beauty of the people that are there. Um, you have to especially see the beauty of the people who you may be maybe you see as the most vulnerable or the mo most marginalized or the most, a lot of times we like would say like the most in need, right? Um, mm -hmm. But it's like before ever getting to like, how do we go about bringing up flourishing or, or change in this community? We have to see where there's beauty and goodness. And like starting on that foundation and even the foundation of just the image of God as it exists in people then allows us to then start to sort of connect in with what God is already doing through his people in this community. And, and then, and then the model says like, instead of me kind of coming with all of my ideas of how to best help you, I listen to you. And I think it's like, it sort of makes sense, similar to like, I'm not going to be like, hey, Devante, me and a bunch of white women just created a program for mm -hmm. how you as a black male can thrive. You'd be like, well, mm -hmm. thanks, <laughs> but do I get to have any input into this? Do you mm -hmm. think I have, right? Or similar, the opposite. If it's, you know, mm -hmm. if it's, uh, we don't even have to give other examples, right? The example stands like the people who are experiencing where things are not the way that they're supposed to be can speak to that in a way that we can't understand if we don't know them. And so asset-based community development, Christian community development rests on relationship. Yeah. It rests on not just relationship, but mutual relationships where we mm -hmm. know and we respect and we value and esteem each other. And then 
we work together um, to see a community thrive. It also rests on the idea that instead of looking and at and addressing sort of the top level symptoms, we start to ask more mm -hmm. questions. We get more curious mm -hmm. about like what what happened for these symptoms to emerge, right? Like yeah. what what's underneath this that's producing this? Um, I mean, similar, like if I have a cough or something, we're gonna look to see, is this COVID? Is it the flu? Is it just a cold? Like, because that mm -hmm. starts to help inform what the best um, remedy is yeah. for um, for those symptoms. So it's starting to look at like, hey, what are the, um, what are the underlying root causes and s symptoms? And then how do we holistically engage? Um, so, so we want to see relationships between humans and Jesus um, reconciled or repaired and made right. But then also because we recognize flourishing is lacking in so many different ways and that Jesus wants to make it all right, then like engaging in a holistic way. So there's, there's a lot more to the model, but the idea is it's local, it's relationship centered, and it's mm. really identifying and building on what's strong and then, and then going together to like, to correct things at a root level. Sorry, that one kind of got long, but it, it's oh, so yeah. much of the substance okay. of it. And then the third model is a model of collective impact that says, even beyond maybe the church, like when, when nonprofits and government and businesses and the church, when they get together and they get in the same room with each other and they are together with, from the asset base, like they're together with community members from the affected community and they together decide on a goal. They just together decide on some big thing they want to accomplish and they agree on how they're going to measure change and how they're each going to contribute to um, engaging that and what role different people are going to play and they communicate and and collect data and actually measure progress that again far more can be accomplished in a community no matter how big the organization is and like the collective impact model you know this isn't the way that it's lives out it's like hey what if this whole city government and unicef and the united way and not just mm -hmm. like small it's like hey even these really big organizations that are accomplishing a lot we recognize that we on our own can do far less than we could do together so it's like people getting in the room and doing it together so yeah. so all that to say i know i've been talking a lot but um if you're still following me the united community flourishing model says like how do we overlap churches working together for their city but we do that in local communities where we involve and respect and esteem that local community and follow their lead. And then we do that in collaboration with other major power plays, players in the community in order to affect something really big and beautiful. That's what the model is. Yeah. It's I, a lot, right? Well, I, I think it's, it's necessary right. for us to, to see that there is a pathway to a more holistic, um, a more healthy community. And I think what you're explaining about the, the United Flourishing model gives us an opportunity, invites mm -hmm. us into the space to do that. That is not just about one person, it's not just about one organization, it's about how we find the intersections mm -hmm. and how we use that as a, a fuel, right? Mm -hmm. as, as a strategy. Um, for seeing community. I'm, I'm going to throw this in. This wasn't on the list of questions, but I think the Unite Flourishing model speaks to so much, especially in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, what, what do you see as in such a polarizing time, mm -hmm. right? Um, how do you see this flourishing model living out in communities such as Atlanta, right? Um, how does this help to bridge 
some of the divides that we've seen yeah. um, with COVID, with mm -hmm. racial un uh, unrest, um, with government and right. politics. It's, what does that speak to, if anything? Well, I think, I mean, a couple of the things, when you get, when you get people who are different from each other around the same table, with a posture of respect and humility of, of like working together. And then you are going after, um, you're going after something that's sort of bigger than all of you. Mm -hmm. I think it's an environment that's just so rich for, for building unity, right? Because all of a sudden, you might we might differ in we might be different racially we might be different gen from a gender standpoint we might be different politically we might be we might come from different denominations but all of a sudden you're a human being across the mm -hmm. table from me not just a an idea not a theory not a news sound bite right and it starts to like bring a healthiness to the way that we engage with each other. It, it invites a humility that says, I don't really know it all and I have things to learn from you and you're helping to uncover blind spots that I have. It invites a like more well-roundedness and a greater perspective of life about how to engage in a healthy way because we're all capable. I mean, I'm, mm -hmm. I think, um, the thing that I have loved the most about my life and journey is that I get to know so many different people and kinds of people and people who sometimes I ardently disagree with or or on it quite honestly initially would have started out really judging of mm -hmm. like in some way being um honestly probably inferior or like they just don't get it right yeah, or yeah. they're just not responsible enough or they're just this or they're just that or you know like and it's just so easy to do that when you don't actually know people but when yeah. you actually know a person it's like oh wait this story is far like larger and more nuanced than I realized and I like have blind spots I mm -hmm. have ways that I've been understanding and interpreting this that are so, um, so much far, like less than what is actually real. And so honestly, I just think just the being together in a room with people who are different from each other, linking arms with a like posture of mutual respect mm -hmm. and walking together is so sanctifying for all those like people <laughs> who like theological words it creates like a holiness yeah. in my life and in your life. And it, and it allows for a greater gospel effectiveness um, and missional effectiveness in the kingdom um, when we're walking together. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard, right? right? I mean, although it hasn't been that hard here. Interesting, like I was like, I like, think of our team and I'm like, it actually hasn't been that hard. But it can be hard sometimes, right? Like yeah. when, because you can all, it can kind of like be a sexy idea of like, oh yeah, let's Everybody all get together. To yeah. And then all of a sudden, when you're like trying to hash through how things get done, and there's like these like clashes, it's so easy to start judging and questioning and all those things. But um, but if you're willing to stay in it and mm. keep curious and stay humble, it's amazing what can emerge. Yeah. It's like beautiful. I mean, so we both know that, you know, even the principles from CCDA, as far as what community transformation looks like, it's, you know, if you're not invested into a community, meaning if you're not invested into people right. for at least 10 years, right? Right. Um, then you will, you won't see the the progress, the impact, yeah. right? That, that you could see with yeah. the longevity, with yep. the journey. And I mean, we've, I've, We've known each other for about 10 months and so we have a little bit more time but mm -hmm. i can say even in our journey together so far there has been something um energizing relieving uh hopeful about what we can do together mm -hmm. and i think that has been the most impactful thing for me being able to walk with you um these last few months 
and to see that that promise, that hope. Um, but 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 it doesn't. It can't just end with how we relate, right? I think it's a part of it, um, but it's about how we are helping others to to step into the journey of flourishing with us, mm -hmm. to be with us. And so moving forward, mm -hmm. um, you, you may not be with Unite, but you're still in the work of flourishing. Mm -hmm. And what is that message that you, that you're hoping to give people in a transition like this mm -hmm. about how we continue to work together? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. I mean, sort of to what you were already saying, it's like, um, like you don't need to be, you don't need to be an, an organization that's mm -hmm. focused on flourishing in order to do the work of flourishing. You don't need to be in the same organization as someone else in order to link arms with them, right? And so um, I think I'm excited because I'm moving to an organization that is specifically focused on flourishing. But if you think about it, like schools are an organization mm -hmm. that's focused on flourishing. Businesses can be organizations that are focused on flourishing. Um, neighborhood organizations or associations can be organizations focused on flourishing. Yeah, yeah. Garbage collectors are businesses mm. that are focused on flourishing. So the reality yeah. is, and I think that's that's like at the heartbeat, right? We yeah. um, we kind of like talk and laugh about like how flourishing is a twenty nine seven thing. Like it's an all it's all of our life. It's not like mm. it's this isolated thing and this isolated job or job mm. description you do that makes you do the work of flourishing. I know I keep like saying like 29-7, it's a 29-7 yeah. thing, right? Um, but that was actually your idea. And so I'm sure people maybe don't even know what that, what is 29-7, so maybe you mm -hmm. should just like tell them right now. Well, well it, I mean, it's really the ethos of how Unite and many city movements, not just Unite, have kind of operated, right? Off of this Jeremiah 29-7 passage, right? It's actually the only place in scripture where God tells them to seek the peace more than once. Like he said, flourishing, he says peace three times in one scripture, which is extremely important. And like in scripture, if they put, put in, if there's emphasis on something, it's repeated. And I feel like that was God's heart for us to not just seek it uh, conditionally, right? Like in this, um, you know, when I feel like it phase. And like you said, 24 seven, it's, it's a 29 seven. It's, it's always seeking the flourishing always committing to communities, always committed to flourishing. Um, and that's not just something that Unite embodies, but that's something that every individual, every person in the family of God should embody and embrace this continual uh, idea of flourishing. So it's a 29-7 thing. It is the way that we live life and make decisions about everything that we do that either fosters and contributes to flourishing or it takes it away from it, right? And mm -hmm. so what I love about Unite, Unite has been and is going to continue to sort of invite people in the family of God to on this journey of how can we more and more, like how does my life become more and more congruent where the decisions and the things that I'm doing in my life contribute to the well-being of others in the city that I'm living in and, um, and so I'm excited to like, obviously continue that journey myself. I'm excited for Unite to continue it. And I'm excited to see ways that, because I mean, I'm gonna be in Atlanta, in the city, yeah. you know, not very far away, even geographically from where you all live. Um, so I just feel like it'll be really fun just to see, even as I, um, step into a new organization and a new role, just ways that we can link arms and just keep working together. But yeah. Well, I, I appreciate you. And this is coming from me is just saying, thank you. Um, I'll say this very directly. We don't acknowledge the role that women have played enough in the building, the main, the maintaining and the continuance of the church. Um, and, you have laid such a, a foundation and a ground, a groundwork for, for me to work on and from. And so I, I have to say, I'm standing on shoulders of people like you and with you um, as we continue to link arms and engage with 
Atlanta and beyond for flourishing. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you for what you've imparted to me this last few months and how we're going to continue to do this together. So. Well, it's interesting because clearly this is something I'm passionate about, right? Like mm -hmm. you can't. Um, and I think the thing that I'm excited about is it would be hard for me to make this transition if I didn't feel like um, the person who is leading United into the future would like, um, if they wouldn't be able to like carry that. But it, it, I've like found such a resonance and such a like excitement about you being the leader of Unite and you carrying this vision and this work uh, forward into the future. I feel like um, it almost is like this, I mean, and I tried to sort of express this in the, the letter, but it's it's like this, like both and, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's like, oh man, it would have been so fun to continue to work together inside of the same organization together, because I'm just have just been loving and so thrilled by it. But also, it's a sigh of relief of like, I can I can step out and do this parallel journey with you that intersects. And know that like this work is going forward and it's going to go forward stronger than ever. And so anyways, yeah. it's yeah. Well, thank you. And to everyone watching and listening, as we continue to link arms, we are inviting you to, to link arms with us um, as we continue in 2023 and beyond for the work of flourishing in communities. Um, so thank you, Ruth. And uh, we will see you guys in 2023 as we continue to flourish.